tugboat Let's make it float She's been on land for a while Darian lifted her up and sat her down on his aisle We lived here way over a year It's been our paradise All we need is water around So we get back on with our life Oh, and all we need is water around So we get back on with our life This is Jeff and Jen on Anna Marie. <laughs> this is the Anna Marie. This is the... Yes, one Ella Haba. One Ella Haba. Not too many neighbors. I've <laughs> okay, got this... a couple of egrets, uh, some uh, red-winged blackbirds, a few things like that. Couple of sharks. We drink the beer that the Bahamians drink. Chicken, chicken. Hey, Jeff. Hey, mate. You got it all jacked up and ready to go? Getting close. I've got this jack under this wheel, and I'm going to go and get another jack from the front. Rolling. She was moving. Well, at least I got the thing under this time, so we'll move easier next time. How much further do you guys think you have to go to the water? Well, we've been debating what do you call getting to the water. If you say to the high water mark, we're already here. If you say the low water mark, we think it's about 50 feet. Probably 50 feet to the stage where we have to take our the winch off the back swim deck and move it to the front and go from a heave to to a heave against system, which we've been designing how do you guys like being out here at Ella Harbor? <laughs> we love it. It's beautiful. Yeah, like, it'd be nice to have a 90 horsepower boat and a dock. You'd be living in a four-bedroom apartment on a pretty quiet, nice block of land with some damn good fishing around. So, but I don't think our family would like us to set up a camp that, that stable. <laughs> this is one of our many tables that we've built. As each of the tides comes up, which is a regular event around here, every time we have a west wind or a northwest wind, the water comes up to the height of these tables and has even have a wave that goes through. It then transports all of our stored wood 300 feet up the hill. We go and collect it again and we're back to square one. So how do you get supplies to the island? Okay, so we go by tender over to Crossing Rocks. 10 Ta foot tender at that. <laughs> <laughs> that takes us between 30 and 45 minutes, depending on the weather, the tides, availability of a car. We then hire a car, they pick us up at the dock. Then it's 30 minutes into Marsh Harbour. We shop there and come home. And pretty much the tender fills up with water and leaks air quite often. So we take a pump with us and a bailing bucket but it gets us by it's something we put together when we got when we got close enough and knew we were going to make it to the water uh, out of two old tenders 
So we had to put a new transom in it and everything. So it's not the greatest thing in the world, but it gets the job it's done. It's an adventure. <laughs> and how many times has it been an adventure? <laughs> uh, on at least two occasions we've polled and swum home, dolphin pulling the boat. I've been rescued once. Yeah, so two yeah. occasions. Yeah. Because when we first arrived, we arrived without the solar panels and without an inverter. We had no power. Our generator wasn't working. So we had an urgent need to cook everything as fast as possible, to especially meat and any perishables. Then we had to work out how are we going to survive. We had a lot of dry foods. We had fish in the ocean. And we did. We survived for about four weeks. We made our own fridge. Like an air-cooled fridge out of canvas that we hung up under the... Up on the bridge. Up on the bridge. And we put water in it, let the breeze cool it down, and then things survived surprisingly well. And then we met some people, and they felt sorry for us. They bought us some supplies, some ice. Gas. We really started to live uh, very, very well. That We then met the people at E&E &E Grocery down in Sandy Point. They set up an account, and then we would receive monthly um, supplies. So we started, that started to be good. We then found an inverter, a very small one. In town, a fellow who had ordered it pre-hurricane, he drove it all the way to Sandy Point for us, and that changed our lives. Yeah, we reconfigured our solar to 24 volt coming down to 12, and whereas previously it was 48 coming down to 24 and then onto a 24 bank battery, but we changed it all to 24 to 12. And so that ran our 12 volt system. And then these uh, lovely old fellas come along with some solar lights for us that they were donating after the hurricane for the whole of the Bahamas. And when they were fly fishing, they just said, oh, we'll give those people some, they might need them. And we said, I think other people would need them more. We're, we're okay, we've got some 12 volt, but I'm glad he insisted we took them because They've been handy over our dining table. Then we had lights at night. It mm. was fabulous. All the time. Thank you, Mr. Kellogg's. It was Mr. Kellogg, yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's a good question. Out of everybody that's given you a hand, do um, you guys want to say thank you to anybody? You? Yeah. Well, besides me. <laughs> yeah, our biggest thank you is to Keith. <laughs> yeah, and Bob and Jane, of course, uh, coming here with their little teams of people to do and jackhammering. And that's... Dave and Tamara. And more for the company, you know, it's just wonderful to have their company. Thank you for their company. And then Blackfly big time. Yeah. The Blackfly Lodge people, they call in. Sometimes they've got a beer for us and a chat. And Yeah, thank you, Clint, for and, allowing all that. Patrick uh, for coordinating it. Yeah, and they take, in the early days when we didn't have a tender and we needed to go out of town or into town, they were more than happy to come and pick us up. One time they even came basically in the dark to get us so we could get to the airport on time. And obviously the E&E &E grocery mm. store lady for helping us get food. Trusting us enough with an account when she hadn't met us. Our little car hire people, Sh Shakira and Emmett, um, and their family have just been wonderful. And our new friends from the hood, they call it the hood. What's it, what's it really Long called? Beach Estate. Long Beach. They've, they've put on beautiful breakfasts and lunches for us over the last couple of months. And um, it's, We might have missed someone in there, but if we did. Um, yeah, Arda and Picky. Ah, yeah, those guys. <laughs> They're from Crossing Rocks, great workers. They've helped us out. They were the guys that helped in their conch boat, fishing boat, just a Bahamian skiff. They bought everything, all the steel, everything over. They worked in the chop. Precious they were goodness. turning up wet, and they are strong buggers. One's 62, same age as me. He's picky 63 now, probably. But he's a lot stronger than me. He's a diver, and, in, you know, he's in great shape. That's <laughs> that's good. So what do you think the condition of the boat is? Well, the hull is sound. We fixed the only problem that we had, which was our, our sounder. And we've re, we've re, um, we've glued that with epoxies and things like that. So that's not going to leak. There's no other place with the potential to leak. She is half inch aluminium all the way, all the way through that hull. Uh, the steering at the back, we have the, the uh, starboard side rudder steering arm, the round piece with the arm coming off it, that got bent, but we got a new one, we're ready to go. 
and put the two new props on but we're not going to put the props on until we get back in the water we're going to put two new um, impellers in there make sure that it's all turning nicely turn the motor the motors are going to turn the 671 Detroit's they just hit them with a sledgehammer jobs apparently and we just expect to get back in the water pretty much to connect the batteries up and turn the key and off she'll go so what kind of hardships have you guys had while you've been trying to do this project nothing really that i can think of oh. just just the job in itself is a oh. reasonably hard job learning to weld for me was not too bad really no, no mm. uh, nothing i would call a hardship what about you well accessing supplies it's very very difficult yeah but it's kind of fun too it's not a hardship like you hop in a tender you go to a boat ramp you hop in a car with all these bahamians sometimes you've got five bahamians to do your shopping with you and they're a hell of a lot of fun i, I wouldn't call that a hardship <laughs> i was sort of talking about international supplies and getting you know timber oh, yeah. steel that's wheels, hard that's hard getting those sorts of things yeah, yeah nothing's easy to get out here you want to get you need a piece of four by two and yeah yeah it's just it's a hassle to get yeah yeah that's a hardship no, it's kind of fun too, you know, like we bought all this wood over by making a raft and towing it over in an eight horsepower tender. So, you know, I don't know. What's hardship? That's the question. So when you guys first got out here, um, nothing was open yet. And how did it get the, the first round of supplies getting out to the island and then all the stuff that happened after that? How long did that take? Six months? Just to get it all together. Exactly. So in this, we arrived here on the 1st of September. Then at the end of February 2020, the dock was secured and, and we were able to get supplies in from America. Prior to that, it had taken us all of that time to source the supplies. Uh, and design the system. Design the system. Know exactly what we wanted because we knew we only had one chance to get it right. We weren't prepared to spend the money until we were... 70% chance of success and so we decided we were 70% ch chance of success and so far we're still around about that <laughs> <laughs> yeah so what do you guys do with all your time out here on the island so when uh, we're not spending time preparing the land like jackhammering or Jeff's doing the winching or jacking, jacking. up of the boat we've got all the things to do that you would normally do if you were off grid. We, we arrived here uh, through Dorian, so but during that process we lost half of our solar panels. Our inverter caught on fire due to rain. And so we are on limited power. We have to manage our power, we have to manage our water. We collect rainwater into some tanks under our bed, which are 125 gallon tanks. We then pump that out, put it in buckets, we filter it, we use it. We, we have to manage our trash, uh, so we have to wash it. So that means every beer can that you drink has to be rinsed, you know, because you don't want to attract flies to the property. We haven't taken any rubbish off, it's all on our boat. Exactly. Or burnt. Yeah, so we haven't taken a single item to land in all that time. So we manage our trash into sections. So we have uh, plastics, bottles, uh, uh, recycling. I've been doing a Spanish course, Yo Hablo Espanol, for three years. So, tres años. I've been doing a Spanish course for three years and that's been enjoyable. I really like it. I'm in the Silver League. Diamond League, actually. Is it? Diamond League. Diamond League. <laughs> and he's won that a few times. But we also have to have fires on a regular basis. We separate our trash uh, wood is a big item, so we collect all of the recycled timber that's broken up and burn that as we go. Jenny did a English teacher's course, just in case we needed more money. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So since you guys have been here on the island, some things have happened in Australia that you guys have missed. We have Ooh. we've missed some big issues, family-wise. COVID wise, world wise, everything. But I guess the biggest issues are we've had two grandchildren born two years ago. Uh, we've had some 
other things that we've missed that have been positive, yeah. COVID, living here, we've uh, escaped the whole COVID, we didn't have a clue what was going on. But other things that we've missed, family and friends, yeah? Yeah, going into town for the first time in COVID time, I walked in the wrong side of the supermarket door and a big Bahamian guy came up to me and said, sir, you haven't got a mask on. I went, oh, I'm sorry. And I went out to the car because I had a mask, I just forgot. And apparently when I'm out the car, the um, big Bahamian guy, Jenny was at the till, he was saying to the whole shop, see that guy, no mask, walks in the wrong door, looks like he owns the joint and hasn't got a worry in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Little did he know. <laughs> It's a boat, let's make it float She's been on land for a while Darian lifted her up and sat her down on his aisle We live here way over a year It's been our paradise All we need is water around So we get back on with our life Oh, we know Get back on with our life.